In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to create a vintage 3D VHS title animation in After Effects. If you're a fan of retro aesthetics and you want to induce that sweet feeling of nostalgia, then this is the tutorial you've been looking for. With the help of some simple techniques, we'll create a realistic VHS look complete with static and scan lines. If you're just starting out with After Effects, I recommend setting the video playback speed to 0.5 so you don't miss anything. Let's jump into it. Start by creating a new composition and name it and set the dimensions to 1920 by 1080p. Next, add a text layer. Choose the Chapman Condense font from the Adobe Type Kit, but feel free to use whichever font you want. A font with curves is perfect for this effect as it will create better shadows on the sides. The best thing about this VHS effect is that it's completely editable. If you get to the end and you want to come back to change the text, it's easy and quick. Select the type layer and center align the anchor point with Ctrl Alt Home for Windows or Command Alt Home for Mac. Now align it to the center of the composition. Change the text to a 3D layer, simply click the cube icon and make sure to select the Cinema 4D renderer. Now let's make the text 3D. Search for the extrusion effect and change the value to 200. Add a new camera and set it to 50 millimeters. Change the camera to an orthographic view for an isometric perspective by double tapping A on the camera layer, changing the zoom to 10,000 and adjusting the Z position to minus 10,000. Switch to the top view and center the text using keyboard arrows. Use the pan tool by hitting Y to drag the anchor point to the center. Eyeballing it is good enough in this case. And now to add the lighting. Switch back to the active camera. Add a new light, make sure it's a spotlight and we're gonna rename it to side light. Here are the light settings, but don't take too much notice of these just yet, as we'll come back and adjust them later. Now we want to position it so it faces the right side of the text. You can drag the arrows to move it around. Make sure the selection tool is selected when doing this. Hit V to make sure. Hold the C key to navigate around the text and position the camera side on. Now drag the anchor point to snap to the center of the side. Ensure snapping is enabled in the checkbox above. We want to make sure that the light applies the right number of highlights and shadows so that it's not too overexposed but it's also not too dark. You can do this by editing the settings of the light. Double tap A to bring them out. Edit the intensity and cone angle values. Now switch to the front view and duplicate the light layer using Command D or Control D. This second light will be for the right side. Rotate it until it faces the right side. Then, before we reposition it, switch back to the active camera view. If you tap C instead of holding it, you can cycle through the 3D space navigation options. Here we're using both the pan and rotate options to view the text from an easier angle. Position the light until you are satisfied with how the light is interacting with the text. It doesn't need to be symmetrical to the other light. Now here's something I wish I'd learned earlier as it saves so much time. You can reset this active camera view by clicking view Reset camera one. Now we want to add lighting to the bottom of the text. Duplicate one of the lights again and reposition it to the bottom. Again, I'm holding the C key to navigate around the text. Position the light at the start of your text. Now we're going to duplicate this light multiple times to cover the bottom of the text. First, change the view to front, then duplicate the lights and spread them out. Here I'm going to use four lights, but you can use however many you want, depending on the length of your text or the look you need. Now we want to create some variance in the light. This will make sure that the sides have a nice swirly pattern, which isn't rigid and nothing looks repeated. Tap double A to change the light settings and play with the position of the light to create variance. I'm just going to go through every light now and make those little changes. Once you're done, we're going to add our final light. Add a new light and change the type to parallel. We're changing the type of light here as we want to evenly illuminate the front. Here, I'm just aligning my new front light to the text. Now, we want to parent all the lights to the text so that whenever we move the text, the lights move with it. To do this, select the lights and pick whip them to the text layer. We're pretty much past all the boring setup and now we'll see the effect start to come to life. We're going to start creating the smooth fly-in movement. Click the text and press the R key. Set a keyframe for X rotation and Z rotation at about five seconds seconds in. Drag the playhead back to the start. Bring the X rotation to minus 90 and the Z rotation to about minus 55. Hit Shift P to bring up the position values. Add another keyframe and drag to 5 seconds in. 
Have a play with the Y and Z position until the text disappears just below the camera. It should look something like this. Select all the layers and pre-compose them. Name it to whatever your text says. Search for the effect Colorama and add it to the new text composition. Toggle down Input Phase and change the input to your text composition. I have a pre-made Colorama effect as the Colorama effect can be a nightmare. Here are the RGB codes so you can replicate it. You can also change the cycle repetitions to repeat the pattern created by the lights, but I like to keep it at around 1. Press Alt and click on Phase Shift to add an expression. Add the expression Time multiplied by 100. This continuously cycles through the colours so we get some movement of the pattern. Now is a good time to save your project. I'm just joking, make sure you're doing that as we go. But now is actually a good time to go back and adjust the lights and refine the pattern. So go back into the text comp and just use the same methods as before to refine the lights. Here they seem a bit too bright, so I'm mainly going to dim them a bit to create lighting that's less harsh. We want a nice balance of grey, dark and light areas. Now I'm just going to go back to the main composition and there you go, it's looking much better. Next, we need to add a front to the text so that it's not affected by the colorama effect. We want the front face to be white instead of this dull grey. To do this, duplicate the text comp right click and reveal layer source in the project. Duplicate it with command or control D and rename both compositions accordingly. Hold alt and drag the front comp to replace the duplicated comp in the timeline. Double click into the front comp and remove the extrusion from the text. Go back to the previous comp and remove the color armor only from the front composition. Now it exists on its own layer. This next step is a small detail but it has a massive impact on the final result. We are going to keyframe the extrusion on the sides to make the logo resolve once it moves into its end position. Basically, as the text moves to its final position, the text is going to go from three dimensional to two dimensional. If you look closely, you can see the subtle movement of the sides as it collapses in on itself. Highlight the keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. Press U and align with all the keyframes we made earlier. Make sure to easy ease them all as well. Now the front and the side text will be misaligned, so we have to go back into the front comp and make sure to easy ease the transform keyframe in here too. Now it's time to add some effects to the front face of the text. Add a gradient ramp followed by a colorama effect. I also have a pre-made colorama for this too and you can download that in the description. Now we want to add keyframes to the start and the end of the gradient ramp effect at about 2 seconds in. Go to 5 seconds in and move these points closer to the logo. Select all the keyframes and easy ease with F9. Once you've done that, right click on the front comp, go to layer styles and add a stroke. Make it black, size 2 and inside aligned. Now add a bevel and emboss with a depth of 60% and a size of 18. The last effect will be an inner glow. Set the colour to white, opacity to 60%, choke and size to 20 and range to 40. Now to add the secondary type. It's the little details like the smaller type we're going to add below that really makes the effect more convincing. Here I'm using the Acumen font, also available on Adobe Typekit. Oops, just make sure the caps lock is off when you click away from the type. Just center align that and position it how you want it to look in its final position. Now to animate it. Toggle down on the layer and add tracking. Add a keyframe at about 6-10 seconds in and change the value to 30. Add another keyframe a few seconds before, changing the value to 60. Easy ease them both with F9. Trim the layer like so and add opacity keyframes so it fades in. We're trying to make it appear from behind the main text, so just move this text layer behind the main text. Drag the text to a time where it will appear seamlessly from behind the big text. We can add an echo to this for a slight retro touch. Change the echo time to minus 0.002, number of echoes to 10 and decay to 0.8. As you can see, it's super subtle. Now to add those glow effects that were so popular at the time. This will really bring back memories of your childhood. Go to layer, the new adjustment layer and just rename it to effects. Add a glow effect, set the threshold to 90, radius to 20 and intensity to 0.1. 
Now we're going to duplicate this glow effect a couple of times and gradually decrease each glow strength. This will create a seamless glow. Duplicate the effect, changing the radius to 40 and intensity to 0.05. Duplicate this for the final time, changing the radius to 70 and intensity to 0.02. This creates a nice subtle glow around the entire animation. Keyframe the threshold and intensity of all the glows, move the playhead along a bit and change all the thresholds to 60% and the intensities to 0.7. Paste the first keyframes further down the timeline. We're creating a quick flash so we want it to return back to its original glow settings. Add a slight fastbox blur to replicate the old hazy look of VHS videos. The next effects are probably some of the most important. The text animation is pretty much finished but most of the VHS look will come from these final stages. We now just want to add all of the finishing effects which are going to be the icing on the cake. I'm going to use a load of pre-made VHS textures and transitions from our emulator pack which you can download from sourcelab.shop which will be in the description. There's 40 different textures and transitions in there which are all drag and drop and super easy to use. It'll save you loads of time and you can move straight on to the final steps of this tutorial. Even if you're using your own textures and transitions, here's how to make sure they blend well with your footage to create that authentic retro look. So on to the final touches. Add all the project files to a group. Drag in the VHS emulator. The VHS emulator is where we will render our final animation from. And this drop here composition is where we will put the composition that we have been working on up until now. We'll just label our original composition green to make it easier to find. Drag it into the drop here comp. Now we can check out the settings in the VHS emulator comp to tailor it to this project. This adds a really nice subtle VHS effect by default. It's just a really quick and easy way to instantly emulate a warm VHS effect and comes with options to tone the effects up or down depending on your preference or project. I'll show you how to refine these settings. Watch how it completely transforms the look. Next, jump back into the drop here composition. The emulator pack comes with 40 loopable textures and transitions which make it look even more authentic. On this occasion, we're going to pick the file named Defects Standard. Just drag and drop it in. We can loop this texture by clicking this icon and increasing the loop value. Change the blending mode to screen and bring the opacity down. Now we want to add RGB3, which emulates the distortion CRT red, green and blue pixels on a VHS TV. Again, we want to loop it and change the blending mode to something that suits. I think I'm going to go for color dodge here. We can also add a levels effect to this to highlight and darken certain areas. I'm just going to play around and tweak these quickly. Now we want to create the outro with some nice static noise and VHS defect screens. Drag and drop these two files in and move to the end of the animation about 7 seconds in. Change the static noise blending mode to screen. You can copy what I'm doing here, but it's it's easy just to time each effect to whatever looks right to you. Add a displacement map effect on the retro 3D title composition. We're going to set keyframes so that it distorts when the overlays are introduced. This will make the noise texture look like it's interfering with the text itself. Play around with the defect overlays until you achieve what you're looking for. Nice and subtle works best for me as it does not take away from the main animation. Head to the VHS emulator comp to view the final result. I'm just going to tone down this star glow a little and that's it. You should have a retro 3D VHS title that looks like it's come straight from your favorite childhood box set. I hope you're happy with the outcome of your animation and just remember the key to creating a successful retro animation is in the details. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Until next time, get creating.